Hello, I'm Jen Grice, author of the book, You Can Survive Divorce. I'm a divorce mentor and empowerment coach guiding women to surviving and thriving after divorce. Find out more about this ministry and my book at jengrice.com. You'll also find resources, tools, encouragement that you need to get through this foreign territory we call divorce on my website or here on this channel. So I often get the question, I mean often, for the years I've been doing this, I hear it at least once a month. Um, somebody will email me and say, uh, will God forgive me? Or does he forgive me? Or does he still love me? Or has he abandoned me? Or, you know, all these similar type questions. They just wonder if God can and will forgive them and continue to love them even as a divorced person. And honestly, it makes me sad for these women and somewhat angry at the liar who told these women that God doesn't forgive those who are divorced and that they are not loved by God. That is not the truth. So first, let's talk about the lie. The God hates divorce, and that makes women feel like that he hates them too. So reading from Malachi 2, the New International Version, it starts off with, and now you priests, this is a warning for you. If you do not listen, if you do not resolve to honor my name, says the Almighty Lord, I will send a curse on you and it will curse your blessings. So God is talking to the priests and he goes on to scold them for turning his people to sin instead of instructing them to walk the righteous path. As we read on in Malachi 2, starting at verse 10, it's, it's talking about breaking the covenant through divorce. It says, do we not all have one father? Did not one God create us? Why do we profane the covenant of our ancestors by being unfaithful to one another? Judah has been unfaithful. A detestable thing has been committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. Judah has desecrated the sanctuary. The Lord loves by marrying women who worship a foreign God. As for the men who do this, whatever he may be, may the Lord remove him from the tents of Jacob, even though he brings an offering to the Lord Almighty. Another thing you do, you flood the Lord's altar with tears. You weep and wail because, you, because he no longer looks with favor on your offering, accepts them with pleasure from your hands. You ask why? It's because the Lord is the witness between you and the wife of your youth, and you have but been unfaithful to her, through she, though she is your partner, the wife of your marriage covenant. Has not the one God made you? You belong to him in body and spirit. What does the one God seek? Godly offspring. So be on guard and do not be unfaithful to the wife of your youth. The man who hates and divorces his wife, says the Lord, the God of Israel, does violence to the one he should protect says the Lord Almighty. So be on guard and do not be unfaithful. Now other versions do say God hates divorce, but I like this version because in, in other versions like it, it talks about the man who hates divorces his wife and he's unfaithful to her. And that's what we're talking about. That's what it's talking about when we say God hates divorce. The commandments were broken when priests allowed men to cheat on the wife of their youth and divorce her for something better when the wife was faithful and good. This is cruelty and wrong. This is why God hates it so much. He hates how the priests and the people do something, took something that meant to protect women or the innocent party and then turned it into something that hurt innocent people or women and children. God may hate divorce, but for good reasons. But he certainly doesn't hate divorced people. And in nowhere does that say that. And actually, in all honesty, he's talking about how he loves divorced people and he wants to protect them. His commandment of do not commit adultery was created out of love. Love for his children, especially the innocent ones on the other side of infidelity. He doesn't want any person, man or woman, to be abused in such a way of being deceived and defiled like that. 
as adultery does to another person. And God, of all people, knows how that feels. He's been cheated on by idols and lied to since the garden. He created every human to walk with him in love, but people chose to walk away. So let me tell you, when God talks about divorce, or even Jesus talks about divorce, they have compassion for the innocent party, the one who's been abandoned, cheated on, or abused. God loves you and sees your pain. He wants to heal you and restore you, to give you back all that was taken and work things out for good. Lastly, women ask about being forgiven, but I ask, what does God have to forgive you for? Read the Ten Commandments, read your Bible, consult with God, cleanse your heart. Divorce is not on the list of being a sin because it's not. It's not on the Ten Commandments, adultery is. There are things that are done that are sins that cause divorce, like abuse, adultery, and other sins. If you've done those things, then seek forgiveness and restore your relationship with God because ultimately that's what it, this world is about, your relationship with God. But if after searching your heart and you haven't done these things, then you have to realize God has nothing to forgive you for, at least not concerning your divorce. Talk to him about anything else you need forgiveness for and then accept his forgiveness and forgive yourself. Maybe like most of us, you you were doing the best that you could at the time, and re repentance means to learn better and do better. God loves you, all of his children, even sinners. If you read Romans 5, and especially verse 8, you'll see, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He just wants to give everyone a chance to repent. Once you accept his loving kindness as your savior, you are forever his beloved. Don't forget that. But what do you think? Does God love divorced people? Does he forgive people who are divorced? I hope this was encouraging and empowering to you. If you have any questions or would like to leave a comment, please do so below. Also, I'm creating a Stronger Woman After Divorce online course. I hope to have it completed this fall. So let me know your thoughts on that as well. I hope to see you in the next video. God bless.